How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Chain Baker and in today's video we'll make Cuban bread and a Cuban sandwich, which apparently does not originate in Cuba, but still is delicious. So let's go to the kitchen and have a closer look. Since I made my fat comparison video, I've been quite curious about using lard in bread making, and I think this Cuban bread is the perfect introduction to it. It may look simple, but the use of lard and a pre-ferment really makes it shine. But most importantly, when you make Cuban bread, you can also make a Cuban sandwich, filled with mustard, Swiss cheese, smoked ham, pulled pork, pickles, and toasted to perfection. So let's not waste any time and see exactly what we need to make this. We'll need white bread flour, yeast, salt, sugar, water, and lard. Now you can buy lard in the shop, but it'll most likely be tasteless. And I don't see a point of using a tasteless ingredient in this recipe. So what I got here is some smoked bacon lardons, which we are going to use to make our own lard. As for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, and something to score the dough with. I'm going to use a razor blade, but you can also use a sharp knife. You could even skip the scoring, in fact. Right, so let's get to it. First things first, let's make some lard. Get your lardons in the pan, and place the pan on the stove, on medium to high heat. Cook the lardons for 15 minutes, stirring them occasionally to prevent them from burning to the bottom of the pot. This recipe requires 25 grams of lard, which is about 0.9 ounces. Now I got that out of 100 grams of lardons, which is 3.5 ounces. How much lard you get will depend on how fatty your lardons are. I would suggest making more than what you need, just to be safe. Especially because after you've strained it, you can keep it in the fridge for several days. You can use it for other projects, like tortillas. The second thing that makes this bread special is the use of a pre-ferment. Fermenting a portion of the total flour ahead of time will greatly enhance the flavor of this bread, and it will give it a more sturdy texture. Making the pre-ferment is extremely simple. We'll take some of the water, a tiny pinch of yeast, and some of the flour. We'll combine them in a bowl, mix them until there's no dry flour left, and then leave it to ferment. It'll take around 10 to 14 hours, so you can make this in the evening and have it ready by the morning. But you can make it before you go to work, and it'll be ready by the time you come back. And if you want to learn more about pre ferments check out my video on them in the Principles of Baking playlist. And the Breads with pre ferment playlist is full of dozens of recipes using this method. Right, so it's the next day, the pre ferment has risen beautifully, it's full of air. Now we can make the dough. I'm going to use cold water because I'm kneading this dough by hand. It's going to warm up a lot. And you will find the temperature control video also in the Principles of Baking playlist. In fact, if you want to learn more about anything related to bread making, head over there after this video. Okay, so grab a large bowl and combine the remaining water, the yeast, the salt and the sugar. Give it all a good mix to dissolve the salt and hydrate the yeast. Now add the lard. The amount of lard used in this recipe is only 10%, so it is safe to add it from the get-go. Now we can follow that with the pre-ferment and finally add the remaining flour. Now you want to grab your dough scraper and mix this together. Mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour left before tipping it out on the table to avoid making a mess. By the way, if you don't eat pork, you can use different fats in this recipe like butter or oil. It's not going to be the same though because lard is what makes this bread special. When it comes to kneading, we'll use the regular method. What I like to do is press the dough down and forwards with the heel of my right hand then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand. Then turn it and repeat. And once you get into a rhythm, the motion will become fluent. If the dough starts sticking to your table and to your hands, just scrape it all up and continue. It is safe to say that the dough scraper is one of the most important tools in bread making. It's used for mixing, scraping, cutting, shaping. I can't imagine making bread without it. Now this dough should not take more than 6 minutes of mixing. And once it's nice and smooth and not too sticky anymore, it's ready. Now we can pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. Around 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. That's around 77 to 79 Fahrenheit. If your dough is warmer, it will ferment more rapidly. If it's cooler, it will take longer. I'll cover this up and leave it for one hour. It should gain some volume during the first hour of fermentation. Now we need to give it a fold. Dust your dough with flour because it's a little bit sticky. Then grab your scraper, release it from the bowl and pop it out on the table with a smooth side down. Then flatten it out and start folding the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until reach point where it started. Then flip it upside down again, tighten it against the table and that's the fold done. You can see the dough is nice and loose and stretchy. By folding it, we are building some tension into it. It is the lard and the sugar that make the dough like this. And by folding it, we are making it just a little bit stronger. Once you are done with the fold, place the dough back into the bowl with the smooth side pointing up. Now cover it up and leave it to ferment for another hour. Now it should really gain some volume. And if your dough is not rising as much, then just leave it for longer. Or if it's rising too rapidly, then cut the fermentation time down. But regardless, once it's doubled in volume, we can shape it. 
Once again, dust your dough with flour, release it from the bowl using a scraper, pop it out on the table with a smooth side down. Now you want to stretch it out gently to a big rectangle shape. Don't just start yanking it, otherwise you may tear it. You can press it with your fingertips, gently lift it up and stretch it. This loaf will make two large portions, so it only needs to be as long as two sandwiches. Once you have finished stretching it, roll it up and there's nothing special to this method. Take the bottom third and roll it forwards. Then once you reach the top, seal it up. Now what's on top will be the bottom of the loaf, so flip it smooth side up again. This can go into a non-stick paper lined tray. Give the paper a light dusting of flour. This will make it easier to manipulate the dough once it's on there. Because we want to flatten this dough out a little bit more, we don't want it to stick to the paper. So place the loaf on the paper, then press it down. Try and turn it into a long flat rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect of course, it will still taste the same no matter how you shape it. Now give the top of the loaf a light dusting of flour. We don't want the cling film sticking to it. Now we can cover it loosely and leave it for the final fermentation. The proofing time will depend on the temperature of your kitchen. An hour to an hour and a half should do it. During the final hour of fermentation preheat your oven. 200 degrees Celsius, fan off. That's 390 Fahrenheit. And look at that loaf, it's puffed up beautifully. Now remove the cling film carefully. You don't want to tear it or distort it. I should have used a bit more flour to be honest. And I am using a little bit more flour here. It will make the scoring easier and prevent the razor from sticking to the dough too much. To be honest, you don't need to score this dough. It's risen so much that it's not going to burst open at the seam. Scoring in this case is just for looks, not for any technical reasons. If you are going to score it, then go a little bit more than a centimeter deep, which is about half an inch. And now we can pop this bad boy in the oven. It'll take around 20 to 23 minutes. Once it's golden brown all over, it's ready. If for any reason the bottom of your loaf is not quite done, you can flip it upside down and leave it in the oven for a couple more minutes. But this looks just about right for me. Now leave it to cool down, ideally on a rack. Placing warm bread on a flat surface can make the bottom go wet and soggy. But if you don't have a rack, you can lean the bread against something. But here it is, all cooled down and beautiful. It is unbelievably soft. And that's because the use of lard and sugar and the pre-ferment made it rise quite rapidly as well. So it gained a lot of volume. Just look at that awesome crumb. This bread is perfect as it is. You can eat it like this. It has a beautiful sweetness and a little bit of that bacon flavor from the lard. But I want to make the Cuban sandwich, which I had never had before. The flavor combination speaks to me though. So take half of the loaf, slice it open, get your ingredients. We've got mustard mayonnaise, smoked ham, Swiss cheese and some pickled gherkins. Start by spreading the mustard mayo generously on both sides. Then cover each side with a piece of cheese, followed by the ham and the gherkins. There's just one ingredient left to add, the pulled pork. Of course you could make any sandwich you like out of this. Fill it with your favorite ingredients and then toast it up. But whatever you do, make sure it's a decent portion. Maximize that filling to bread ratio. Now here's a little extra thing you can do before toasting it. Ideally, you would want some leftover lard for this. But if you don't, you can of course use butter or oil. But lard will give you the most flavor. Brush both sides of the sandwich. And in hindsight, I should have brushed it before I stacked it up. But it's no big deal. Now place it in a preheated toaster. And if you go one like this with a metal lid, then you can use your oven glove to really press it down. This will ensure it's nice and compressed, and even. If you don't have a glove, use an oven cloth, but regardless of what you use. Around 3-4 to four minutes later, it should be ready. It should have a nice golden color, and the cheese should be molten, and it should have a really crunchy crust. Now all that's left to do is crack a cold beer and cut into this bad boy. I can guarantee you that I'll be making this again. With all that triple porky goodness, cheese and mustard, and that super crunchy texture on the outside and the beautifully soft crumb it just makes for the perfect hot sandwich now i just need to go to america and try the real deal so what do you think this cuban bread have you ever tried the cuban sandwich let me know down in the comments to see more videos like this one click over here subscribe to the channel click right here but that's all i have for you today thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one